What's up, everybody? Let's spin some yarn. Uh, so here's the thing. I got uh, like a, it was like a Facebook meme brought to my attention today um, via the CMC of Facebook. Jay Bell, he posted like a meme uh, kind of poking fun at this original social media post uh, that I'm going to talk about. But basically what, what he posted was the picture from the original post that was somebody got, it was a retiree, um, got, he saw a a service member in like a package store somewhere, half in, half out of uniform. And I'll describe the original post here in a second. Um, I will not share it on social media because I don't think it's going to do anything productive, but I know a lot of you have seen it and have seen the threads circulating around social media. And it just felt like a thing that (laughs) I, I couldn't not address. So, um, the meme that J Bell shared was basically just saying, instead of spending all the time on social media butchering this young lady for her uniform appearance, which was grossly out of regs, and I'll get to that in a second as well. But um, it, like, if you spent as much time on, and, and he used the examples of 3M and Sailor Pay issues, like basically, like imagine instead of being the Facebook uniform police, how much better. It, everyone would be like how much better off everyone would be um, because what the original post was was a young lady in a package store I think there was another sailor that was somehow out of regs even though in the picture I couldn't discern the second sailor it was just a picture of this one sailor that clearly looked caught off guard by the fact that she was having her picture taken um, and she was just wearing NW bottoms and I think boots from the picture. It was kind of hard to tell, but I think she had her boots on and then no belt, like a like a civilian tank top. Um, and then she had her command ball cap on. It, it was way, way out of regs. Um, and the, the post by the retiree was just this really self-righteous, uh, you're a disgrace to the military and the uniform I wear and by virtue of you doing that and disrespecting the uniform you're disrespecting america and me and everyone who served it was just this really like um self-absorbed post about that was more about their service than it was about any actual problem they had with the sailor wearing the uniform even though i understand where that came from i understand the the place that 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 retiree was coming from i get frustrated when i see uniform infractions um, I, I'm a, I'm a, as you know, if you follow this podcast at all, I'm a big uniform guy. I, I very, um, sorry about the ding, my computer, I'm on travel right now and my computer is linked to my phone. And so my wife texted me, but, um, the uniform thing is a big deal to me. I take my uniform appearance very seriously. I, I take the uniform appearance of my subordinates, peers, seniors, the people around me very seriously. Um, when I, I mean, I'm on travel right now and I travel with an O4 supply officer that I routinely correct on his uniform. I corrected the XO of the unit that I'm inspecting today. Um, and I do it in a way that it's more like, a, a I kind of try to treat it as just like a, like a joke or like a, Hey, gotcha or whatever. Like I do it in a way that's kind of try to disarm people, make it come from a place where it doesn't feel like I'm attacking them, disrespecting them, whatever. Like a lot of times with juniors um, that know me well, especially, but even like if it's a junior I just met, it's kind of like a, I'll I'll walk up to him and be like, Hey man, did, did I do something to upset you? Like, did I, did I hurt your feelings? Cause you're hurting mine right now. Like, what are we doing? Like, come on, you know, your hands aren't supposed to be in your pocket, please. Like just for my, my own, like, uh, my own mood or my own like happiness. Can you, can we not please? I, I really appreciate it. Um, and I try to, I don't know. I just try to approach it from a, a place of like almost comedy, like just kind of try to disarm them. We have a laugh. They understand. And by virtue of us having a conversation where I'm not talking down to them or, or, uh, demeaning them in any way or attacking them personally or whatever, uh, or just being a jerk and then staining the reputation of the chief's mess, in my opinion, by, by making the next chief that sailor encounters carry uh, the weight of that chief has to carry the weight of me being a jerk. And now that that sailor is going to interpret chiefs as jerks or at least partially like by, based on that negative interaction. I try to do it in that way for that reason, especially with uniforms. It was something I was talking to that XO who he happens to be a guy that I know. Uh, he was a J.O. on a submarine I used to be on. And, and now he's a couple tours later uh, and he's an XO on a submarine. So we're, you know, I was joking around with him about like certain uniform things and 
we were talking about like hands and pockets and I was joking with him and I'm like, man, they must teach that in the nuclear training pipeline for officers to, to put your hands in your pockets as like an awareness check for chiefs or something because so many uh, of the officers I encounter in the submarine force do it. Like it's almost universal. Um, but it's neither here nor there. We're just joking about it uh, in that way and having that conversation. So that's, that's the way I try to approach those things. Um, with this sailor in particular, super grossly out of uniform regs right and so i i don't walk out of that store without saying something right and i I wouldn't expect any leader uh to to not say something but it's the the way in which you say it if you're not approaching it from a place of like productivity like if i'm not approaching it from a place of of that sailor being in a better place after that conversation than when I started that conversation, then what's the point of that interaction? If I can't go up to that sailor and have that conversation and have them walk away better because of it, then that interaction is a net loss. So what's the point? You're, and this is the gonna be the unpopular statement, but if I can't accomplish that, then I'm failing as a leader, and so are you. If you can't have that conversation with that sailor where they walk away better, and that doesn't mean that we're all just hugging and they're walking away um, feeling like we're BFFs, right? It could be an interaction where you're, you're giving them their medicine in a way. But in this situation, especially like we're in, we're in public. Uh, so we're, we're not just representing the military by our uniform appearance, but that interaction is, is communicating like how the Navy does business and how the Navy's leadership corrects deficiencies to everyone that sees it, hears it, is in earshot of it, whatever. Um, it's it's something that should have probably been approached with a little more nuance. Uh, the sailor in the picture, and this was something that was brought up in the in some of the comments that I read on the social media post, was uh, that looked so strange that it's almost like it's hard to believe somebody would do that maliciously, or arrive at a place that where they would do that without there being something far, far greater wrong. And what I mean by that is how did that sailor arrive in that place where they decided to get out of a vehicle in, in a parking lot of a, of a store that I I'm pretty sure was off base. It's hard. The details are sketchy. It's a Facebook social media thread. So forgive me if I'm not getting all the details, right. If you're like from the local area and you recognize the spot, but like, how does that sailor arrive at a place where they get out of a vehicle, half dressed, looking like that young lady did in her uniform and think that it's okay to go into that store or grab the alcohol or whatever the heck else she had. And, 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 Ex- like just do that like to be dressed in that way um and be so grossly out of uniform rags and everything else like how did we get to that place how did that sailor get to that place where they went through that decision making process and actually went through with it and ended up in that store and i think a key piece of information here is she was she was buying alcohol so does that mean and I, that doesn't mean that um you know she's depressed or she's an alcoholic but it could and did we take the time to ask that question? Because there's a whole lot going on there where the the ability to arrive at that decision making process and end up in the place that she was standing in, there could be a whole lot of other things going on there where instead of attacking her for her uniform appearance, maybe we ask a question like and, and that was the comment made was like, ask her if she's OK. Like, are you all right? Like, is everything OK? And then she, depending on how that question gets answered you move on with the conversation we'll be like like you i mean you're you're half in half out of uniform like i just i want to make sure you're okay first and then if you're telling me that you are like let's go have a conversation about why you're standing here half in half out of uniform like what's going on because that's like it's so bizarre when you look at the picture that it makes me think that i I, like i don't i just don't believe we could have ended up here without there being something more wrong than she just doesn't respect the uniform. I find that really hard to believe. And then I, I always kind of default back to, I don't think any sailor, I, I, and again, there's an exception to every rule, so asterisk, but I don't really believe any sailor joins the military with the intention of failing. Like, there, I don't think anybody's clocking in, showing up to work on, on Hayes Gray and underway or, or on a submarine or at a unit or wherever and go just being like, I'm going to suck today. 
I'm just going to fail at everything and embarrass the military and myself. Like, I don't think anybody goes into anything with that mindset. I think a series of experiences lead them to a place where they're getting out of a vehicle dressed like that. So what were those experiences? How did she arrive at a place where maybe she just made the conscious decision because she's angry and bitter and and just doesn't respect the uniform in the way that she used to? Maybe she is there's a, something really terribly wrong with in, in her personal or professional life that led her to be like emotionally distraught in a way where she arrived in that place. Maybe there's some other explanation for how she arrived in that place. But here's the thing. There's a leader getting a paycheck to take care of that sailor. There's a leader getting a paycheck to make sure her experience in the Navy is such that she does not arrive in that place, in that state. And there were leadership failures along the way. I'm sure of it. Also, it could have been just some acute thing. Like maybe... Cause I, and then this is the thing, like, I don't think anybody ever thinks to have the conversation because the, the number of times I have put my foot in my mouth as a leader by assuming I know what's going on before asking any of the relevant questions, I like it, it has blown my mind and also changed the way I approach things like this in a, in a way that I'm going to ask a lot of qualifying questions before I, I get to a place where I'm having the conversation about it's like strictly a uniform regs thing. Like it, it, I, I can't believe for a second that she arrived in that store dressed that way simply because she doesn't care at all and has always been that way. And you know what I mean? It's just like a blatant disregard thing. And even if it, it is kind of, it's like, how did she get that way? How did she get to a place where her attitude was such that she has a blatant disregard for her uniform appearance? How did we as leaders allow that to happen? That's a question we need to ask ourselves when there's a failure of that magnitude by a junior sailor. Like, whose responsibility is it to make sure that she understands the importance of uniform appearance, that she respects the uniform in the way that she's required to, that she follows all the policies, that she's in a good place emotionally, physically, mentally, she's trained, she's educated, she's prepared to do the thing, and she's just like healthy, totally ready to do the thing, right? Because I, I have a real hard time believing that that sailor is in a great place, whether we're just talking about uh, like professional outlook and an emotional like outlook towards her service in the military, or if we're talking about mental health, if we're talking about just like maybe her career progression stalled, maybe something bad happened in her personal life. Who knows? Maybe it's like a, a conglomeration of all the things. But we didn't ask that question. We failed to take advantage of that leadership opportunity and have an appropriate conversation with that sailor. And think about how many times you you may or may not have done that in your interactions with sailors throughout a myriad of other like types of experiences, right? Like where I, I feel like there was a time in my service where I would have lost it on a sailor like that. And then, and then I learned from those experiences after having put in my, my foot in my mouth so many times where I started to approach them differently. Like maybe there's something else going on here. And then also the taking ownership of the fact that it's my job to make sure that sailor is doing that thing correctly. Like it's chief's jobs to make sure good order and discipline is maintained. A subcategory of good order and discipline is uniform appearance, right? So who's chief? Like, where are we at, chief? And it's all of us. I, we all own that. But like, what chief along the way asked the right questions and had the types of conversations and conducted the type of training and made that sailor feel valued and feel like the uniform appearance was important and deserved the attention that it does and, and yada, 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 right? Like, like, we as leaders failed her. Unpopular opinion, I'm sure. There is, um, there is always a certain part of it that falls on the sailor. There's a personal accountability piece always. But I'm willing to bet the lion's share of this is something that we need to own as leadership, that the chief's mess needs to go find this young lady and have a conversation that goes a little something like, hey, how you doing? Like, are, is everything okay? What's going on? How did we arrive at this place? And and the the key here too is that the, the more you do this, the less 
apprehensive sailors are going to be. Like there is a there is is and and has been for a long period of time, and I've talked about it a ton. A lack of trust between these junior sailors that we continually find in more bizarre circumstances, where they don't think they can have this conversation with us. So maybe she avoids the leadership that could have and and maybe would have engaged in a healthy way because she doesn't trust chiefs, because she doesn't trust leadership, because she had a bunch of negative experiences with those leaders in the past. And so that that bridge got burned. And then maybe maybe she does have an awesome chief right now that would have engaged in a way that that would have been a healthy interaction and could have intervened and and, and such. Right. Like but I, <laughs> something didn't happen correctly along the way that that led us to arrive at, at that situation. Right. And again, there's always a, a personal accountability piece there, but in order to find out how much of it is the sailor and how much of it is leadership, and there's always a leadership component of it. I don't care who it is. If your sailor of the year gets a DUI, you failed them as a leader somehow. Some piece of that process is always yours to own. Like maybe it was just a, a, a boneheaded moment and that sailor of the year comes in the next day sober and just falls on their sword and owns it and it's just like, I had a momentary lapse of judgment. I completely understand what I screwed up. It'll never happen again. And then they recover so hard and become the DAPA and then they're sailor of the year again. And then they make chief or they pick up some, some officer program selection or whatever. So maybe it's just an anomaly. And so more of the personal accountability is on them, but there's still a leadership component to that. Like I could have done something differently or I could have, I could have intervened in a way I could have been better somehow because I'm not perfect. So there's always going to be a piece that I own no matter what, always. However, in scenarios like this where there's such a, such a like acute and, and like gross violation of some type of standard, instead of going high into the right and freaking out about it, instead of it immediately attacking the sailor as if it's only their fault, take a second to ask yourself those questions. Take a second to ask them the qualifying questions. Like, hey, what's going on? Why why are we in this? Because maybe she could be in a place where she hasn't slept in three days and is just in that completely just F the world space and maybe she was sweaty and disgusting because she'd been working so hard for so long. She had a tank top in the car. And she's just like, I just got to get out of this uniform. Takes it off, throws the tank top on, and then somebody suggests stopping and getting some booze on the way home. She just said, F it. And ended up in that place in that time. Like that's I, There's a lot of different ways you could explain that away in a way that makes sense. And it, honestly, and I know, I know it sounds far-fetched when you look at that picture. However, what it also sounded far-fetched when... I saw uh, the TikTok video that Chief DiRienzo did. And then I talked to her for over, like, I think it was like an hour and a half. And it made a whole heck of a lot more sense. And I walked away with a friend that I think is an amazing human being and an awesome chief. So, and not how I thought that movie was going to end, but always, always, always maintaining that open mind and having the benefit of the doubt type attitude is like, this is a human being going through the same experience you are. Let's go ask some questions, find out what's going on and go from there where where we're doing the thing we're supposed to be doing in the first place, where we're taking care of our people. I think that like if we're missing the mark at at anything as just like khaki leadership in the Navy and you could I mean, you could pull first classes and some senior second classes into this, too. If we're missing the mark as naval leadership at anything, it's just the a genuine human interaction that is based in like trust and just understanding that yes I'm legitimately in an authority like I have legitimate authority over you I outrank you but I'm also a human being that's going through the exact same experience you are and particularly for enlisted leadership when we're talking about leadership of enlisted sailors I went through the same place they did every enlisted submariner I've ever led I've stood exactly where they're standing I know exactly how they feel in a lot of these positions because I've been there. And in a lot of ways, you know, the the prior generation was more difficult. It, like we didn't have the lessons learned that we do now. The process may not have been refined. Maybe we have better equipment, technology, manning processes, whatever. But a lot of ways, 
that the, the situations and processes I went through were a lot more difficult. So it's like, I understand what that feels like. I understand how painful it can be, how, how unbelievably mind bending the stress is and how exhausted you can be in ways that it's hard to articulate with words. And it's just, instead of losing sight of what that experience was like and how closely we can relate because we've been there and we've done that and sympathizing and empathizing with that human being that is going through the same experience that maybe just maybe they ended up in this ridiculous situation because we failed them as leaders maybe just maybe we could have done a far better job and prepared them in ways or ensured they got the sleep or the time off or the help that they needed so that they weren't so stressed out so they weren't so exhausted so they weren't so just bitter and angry and jaded as we see a lot of these junior sailors becoming because I don't, you know, I, and I, it, there's documented evidence that we're not doing a great job at getting them sleep and, and de-stressing and stuff like that. So it's just, there's an explanation beyond that that individual just didn't care. And it's, the, to, to me, based on everything we, we just talked about, I think that is the least likely answer so for us to go into those interactions and assume that that sailor just sucks and that they're they just don't care about uniform regs or they just don't care about whatever standard that was violated that we think is so ridiculous to go into that interaction with that sailor that we see out in town dressed like that and assume that it's just on them and assume that there's nothing else wrong there and assume that that sailor doesn't need us to help them with anything to ask them how they're doing or like what can I do for you better as a leader to ensure that that you don't end up here to not to not have that conversation to me is insane the least likely path that led her to where she was was that she just it was blatant dis- it was it was a squared away normal sailor that had plenty of sleep and wasn't stressed out and valued her naval experience all of a sudden flipped a switch and decided mm, i'm going to suck today it didn't happen that's not what you see in that image and so uh i just wanted i oh, i wanted to talk through that process and and how i thought about that when i saw it where it was just like and and, and especially uh, Jay Bell's like take on it which he like he explained a little bit in some of the comments that he responded to but it's just like he's pointing out that maybe we shouldn't spend our time blasting this girl on social media for something that like there's a hundred percent chance you've you've violated uniform regs grossly at some time or another all of us have like you could catch me at some point I'm sure half in and half out of uniform or whatever like it may just be going to my mailbox but I'm just saying like I get home from work and I might de-blouse and have my cover off and walk to my mailbox and if you drove by my house got them you know what I mean but like at some point in our career like when I was a junior sailor 100% chance I did something stupid 100% chance and I probably got corrected for it too um, and I probably got corrected harshly for it but I also was probably stressed out and lacking sleep because of a stores load or because of a bunch of watches or because of whatever like you know what I mean like the the experience didn't change largely the structure's still there so how did I end up in that position how did you end up in that position think about those types of things and, and go into those interactions understanding that's a human being going through the same like insanely stressful experience that you did so how could they have ended up in that position really How could they have ended up in a position where they made the types of decisions that led them to that gross standards violation and then have the conversation from that place? And we might be talking about a thing where somebody's blazing maintenance or somebody's, um, you know, punch somebody in the face or somebody got a DUI. Even in those situations, I would contend that that's how that conversation needs to go even though there's also going to be a preliminary inquiry and that sailor's probably going to go to mast because there are some things that when you i mean when you violate the ucmj there's some things that it's just there's a flow chart there and there's going to be certain punishments that come from 
the sailor deciding to deal with the stress in that way. That And it's like, there's some times where you just can't get around that piece of the personal accountability, but the way in which you approach, like de- doling out that accountability and just like keeping the sailor together, interviewing the sailor during those inquiry processes and DRB and everything else where, where you are having extremely productive conversations making sure you find out how the sailor ended up in that place and then addressing all of that sailor's needs so that they don't end up in that position again. Because like generally I'm going to say, but I I would, I would contend and argue that it's probably always that human being. It doesn't have an, like there's a need not being met. They need something. There's something going on that led them to, to that, to that standards violation. And we need to fix that. I don't need to address the fact that, oh, well, you got a DUI, so you just need to go to SARP or you just need the, the that type of counseling. That might be a need that comes out of that. But like, how did we arrive at, at, at you drinking? It, it, like we ask those questions and it's like, are you abusing alcohol? OK, if you are, why? Like, how did we get to that place? Maybe there's more needs that need to be addressed. So we're actually addressing those sailors needs, like the problem that led to that standards violation instead of just like the standards violation because the standards violation is generally a symptom of a larger problem and we need to take the time to be empathetic ask the right questions build trust with that sailor and come out of it with what the actual problem is so that we can address the needs that that sailor has so that we're actually helping them and making sure that that problem doesn't come up again and building them back up and bringing them back into the fold and making sure that they have the sense of belonging that they need to be a productive member of the team um I think that I think I'm done with that. I think I've addressed everything I wanted to. I'm very, always very interested to hear what uh, any and everyone thinks of this. If you haven't seen the social media thread, it's out there. Um, it's it's not something I'm going to share. It, you honestly don't need to see it. Um, I'm kind of grossed out by the fact that it's circulating social media like it is. But I can't control that. What I can control is that I'm not going to share any of that crap on any of my platform. But I did want to talk about it because I know a lot of you have seen it. I probably will get emails and messages about it if I haven't already. Um, And I just wanted to put this out there because I think that uh, based on what I saw in the comments, a lot of the people interacting with those social media posts as well is like they just they're, they're you're missing the point. You, you should be grossed out that somebody approached it in the way that they did and that they took the time to put that picture on social media and say, make this person famous because of their disrespect for the uniform or whatever. And it's just like, look, I get it. And I get that sometimes like uniform faux pas end up on social media and they get poked fun at. And I get that that's kind of the nature of the beast sometimes. Um, but this was a case where it's just like, come on, like, what are we doing? Like this, it's not productive. And the way in which I saw it interacted with, and then also kind of stoked by the, how I saw, uh, Jay Bell react to it. It it got my, it got my wheels turning and it, it kind of, I got a little more grossed out by the way that the way in which that was shared, the way in which the retiree dealt with it and then the way in which a lot of sailors were interacting with that post. It's just like, you're missing the point. That's not how you deal with that situation. Even though I know a lot of, a lot of people out there and especially a lot of chiefs, I know the initial like reaction upon just walking into a a store or whatever and seeing that is going to be like, like you're going to turn red (laughs) and you're going to be like, what in the, you know, but then take a second, power down, ask yourself, how did we arrive here? And then have the appropriate conversation. And, and the first question is, is, are you okay? Is everything okay? What can I do to help you out? Like, and then go from there just be like, if everything's fine and like, or they're saying everything's fine, be like, well then how did we end up here? Shit, mate, like what's going on with your uniform? Like you either need to be completely in civilian clothes or you need to wear your uniform appropriately. Like what, why are we here? And just have those types of conversations. Um, it may even be a thing where you need to go to the command and just be like, hey, I saw this sailor at the place. This is what happened. Is there something going on there? Like, is there something I don't know? Just want to let you guys know. Because, I mean, that could also be like you you going to them, even though I know it sounds kind of like you're ratting on them and that may end up getting them in trouble in some way that may even add to the problem. But it also might be 
you bringing a red flag to the attention of a chain of command that can then help that sailor out. So it's, you know, it's that, that piece. I understand some people will be like, Oh yeah, no, I need to go to the command and rat on them. And then they can get even more, you know, they more down that rabbit hole when they get punched in the face again. Like I, I get it. I, I need to trust in that process because that's what we have. Um, and hope that that, that chain of command is going to do right by her. Um, but if they're not, and if she's in a place where maybe she has unhealthy leadership on some level, and that's what's leading to what the like the the symptoms that we're seeing, hopefully I can get her to have that conversation with me, and then we can we can work from there. But the more the more empathetic leadership can be, the more trust you're going to build with those sailors, the more willing they're going to be having it, to, the more willing they'll be to have those conversations. And then we can start addressing the actual needs. And that's how this stuff gets fixed. That's how these sailors are put into a good place where they're not doing those these things because they're not whatever need they have that's not being met is being met. And then you don't see symptoms like this. So um, that's what I got for you today. If you guys need anything from us, as always, hit us up. Don't give up the ship podcast at gmail.com. You can Facebook message us. Don't give up the ship podcast. Or you can DM us on Instagram or Reddit at DS Podcast. Um, interested to, to hear from you all, as always. And if you got questions, comments, concerns, don't hesitate to reach out. And that's it. That's what I got for you today. Thank you so much for listening. And don't give up the ship. 